So what's up guys, this is Dimitri with Hyra Canucks and what we've got today on the review table is a $50 enclosure, this is the Cougar QBX, making it one of the most affordable in its class and it's exactly how it should be. Now of course some corners had to be cut but it's a nice departure from more expensive ITX cases, so let's see if this should house your components in the future build after this. Check this out, the Fantex P400S, which is one of the best mid towers on the market, got a sexy upgrade, now with a tempered glass side panel with a comfortable rubberized mount to show off your gorgeous system with an RGB LED strip included. Get your glass on with the Fantex P400S, plant not included. So starting with the size, it's not the most compact ITX case out there, just be aware of that, plus it's not that thin either, it is quite long because of excellent GPU support and in comparison to the Define Mini C, which is a micro ATX closure and the S340 Elite, you're actually looking at a capable mini case. The exterior top and front panels look much better than they feel, they are plastic with this aluminum brush texture and nice dark grey color to create a little bit of separation from the black steel frame. The side panels are perforated but without any dust filtration. This might be on purpose to eliminate resistance for passive airflow, at least the mesh here will stop some of the dust and the only filter is found on the bottom that slides out from the back. The IO is kind of hidden on the right side with power button, USB and audio and being somewhat crammed in there in between this frame, I was surprised to not have any issues with thicker USB devices, they just don't look that great sticking out from the side. But regardless of the plastic exterior and the thin wavy metal panels, the QBX looks premium, which is a nice balance at such a low price. I also appreciate the text branding on the front panel instead of uh, having their full logo displayed there. At the back there are two PCI slots, a 92mm fan included, plus the power extension at the top. Now to have a rear exhaust fan is quite nice, there isn't much volume of air to move anyway. Um, I wish the power extension was somewhere near the bottom or like tucked away to the left side as it doesn't look very good uh, being right in the middle with this thick cable at the top, but as far as the GPU support goes, it's quite standard with two PCI slots and some additional spacing below it, and um, you can install dual 120mm fans at the bottom, but only slim fans with a dual slot card installed. The top panel has an interesting mechanism to slide out to reveal a slot loading optical drive mount, something I wouldn't say is necessary, but uh, it goes right at the front for optimal utilization of that space. And removing the panel, we see dual 120mm fan mount you probably will not need high RPM here given how close the top plastic panel is and you'd want to avoid uh, rebounds of that airflow. On the inside, the first thing we notice is a multi-purpose bracket that is meant to house uh, a 120mm fan or an AIO with two mounting locations which is awesome so you can offset them based on your needs. Second, the bracket has some swivel action which makes removal and reinstallation with hardware very simple with this lock-in mechanism built in. On the opposite side of the bracket, we have a drive cage for two SSDs and a single hard drive and it's a nice compact storage area that can be removed if needed and what we're left with is an open frame and I love how many cable cutouts there are all around. A tiny 80mm fan can be installed at the front, I would skip that and you know some low cost elements uh, pop out here like the ketchup master cables on the fan, a pretty visible green PCB for the front IO and uh, no thumb screws for the PCI slot, the only thumb screws are for the side panels. And I feel like that's totally fine for a budget case, just have your expectations in line. Behind the motherboard tray we get a single SSD mount that can be oriented differently. I put mine to guide a 90 degree SATA cable directly into the main chamber with perfect cable cutouts on either side. So as far as the build goes, the interior supports a full size ATX power supply. You can see it occupies a good half of the interior, but only up to 140 millimeter units in length because of that built in support platform that won't allow bigger units to fit. Although if you have a bigger power supply, you could always bend it uh, if you need that extra room. Room. Also keep in mind the orientation of the AC socket on the power supply as one format is not compatible since the extension cable is quite bulky and will interfere with the frame in that position. Now I decided to use a non-modular power supply which is a surprise for you know an ITX tight compact case just to see how the case would handle those extra cables and as long as they're bunched up and close to the power supply you would have no problem with long GPU support. Uh, 11 inch cards would fit just fine even with 
with this front cable concentration. So cable routing in general was fine, utilizing all the cutouts underneath and on top of the board, plus these extra openings above the power supply, which you can see from this shot works really well to guide that fat 24 pin cable and you can work creatively in securing all the cables, which is my main point of criticism. The lack of cable tie hoops anywhere on the frame is really disappointing, especially at the back here, where there is a little bit of space between that side panel, uh, but uh, also just a fairly large surface area to spread your cables to make everything as flat as possible. They just need to make it just one tiny bit better because cable management is not super easy. And so here's the finished system with a GPU in place. I can see what Cougar was trying to achieve here. Uh, the QBX is a good option for an ITX system with existing hardware, aka not needing to buy an SFX power supply. And I would definitely utilize a 120mm all-in-one cooler for the CPU and maybe one additional fan above the motherboard area for exhaust. But the bottom intake is kind of awkward because the ventilation strip doesn't span the full 120mm width and I feel the case doesn't have that much height for ventilation from the bottom. Although I do appreciate everything uh, the QBX stands for and its full package at only $50. It comes with a surprising amount of options. It looks modern and I can totally look past the drawbacks, which is why we're giving it the Hyra Canucks Damn Good Value Award. And you can now consider an ITX build that realistically fits into your low budget. And so that is it for the Cougar QBX review. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.